Hey friend, welcome to Grounded, the vestibular podcast. I'm Dr. Madison Oak, aka the Vertigo Doctor. I am the vestibular physical therapist who is here to help you with all things dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo. In this podcast, we explore the fascinating world of vestibular disorders. Come with me as we dive into the journey to discover the mysteries of dizziness, the brain, inner ear, and the balance mechanisms that keep us grounded. Whether you've been managing your dizziness for one day or for 25 years, we are going to get real about what it takes to manage dizziness, handle the anxiety cycle, and thrive, not just survive, with your vestibular disorder. First, I want to remind you that this is never medical advice. Remember, this podcast is for informational purposes only and may or may not be the best fit for you and your personal situation. It shall not be construed as medical advice. The information and education provided here is not intended or implied to supplement or replace professional medical treatment, advice, and or diagnosis. Always check with your own physician, medical professionals, and healthcare team before trying or implementing any information found here. Meet me in your coziest chair while we navigate the highs and lows and the twists and turns of the vestibular universe. Welcome to Grounded. Let's dive in. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Grounded. We have the lovely Kelsey Voskamp with us today, who is one of our vestibular group fit coaches who I absolutely adore. Everyone in group loves her, actually. She teaches cardio and high-intensity strength training and exercise, which is definitely something to work up to, but is such a good class when you can take it. She is a fellow vestibular warrior and is going to share with us her story about her life or her vestibular diagnosis and all the things in between. So welcome, Kelsey. Thanks so much for being here. Awesome. Hi, I'm Dr. Madison, and thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I am so excited too. So today we're going to be talking all about you. So I would love it if you could introduce yourself and kind of tell us about all the things. Well, awesome. Yeah. Um, Well, thanks for having me. Uh, As you said, Mm -hmm. I'm Kelsey Boskamp. I'm from Denver, Colorado. Um, I actually grew up in the mountains of Colorado, Um, but I have vestibular migraines. So um, I'm really excited to be a part of this um, because my journey started in 2018 when I um, actually went to an amusement park for my bachelorette party. And after I got done at the amusement park, I started experiencing chronic dizziness symptoms. You know, it it was pretty consistent. I sort of had them up and down for a while, um, until, and I went to, you know, doctor after doctor, no one could figure out what was going on with me, as I know is the case for many fellow vestibular Mm -hmm, warriors. mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and I finally in 2020, I had a huge spike of symptoms where, um, you know, it just, it hit me 10,000 times worse than it was before. And I had no idea what was going on. I was really scared. And at that point, I finally found a doctor that diagnosed me with vestibular migraine. So it was at that point where I, you know, was finally able to understand. You know, since then, I've been I've been living the life of having vestibular migraine. I also think for a while, I, I might have had PPPD as well. Mm-hmm. But I think back when I was diagnosed, that wasn't really a thing. So I don't think that I understood that diagnosis. Fair enough. Well, thank you so much for sharing about your diagnosis. So we are going to talk about movement. Now, I know you've had a really long journey with movement and obviously vestibular migraine playing a role in that. And I would love it if we could talk about that. And then of course, how you found group, but we can get to that later. I would love to know all of that and how you kind of found movement in your vestibular migraine journey. Yeah. So in 2020, 2021, you know, I was going through the thick of my symptoms and I, you know, I got to the point where I was really tired of feeling the way that I was feeling. And I decided to kind of step up and take control and just be like, you know what, I need to do something different. And so I decided to start exercising and, you know, get exercising so that I thought that if I, you know, started getting healthier as a person in general, 
then my symptoms would, you know, go away or would cease a little bit. And so um, I started strength training specifically, um, you know, lifting weights, doing cardio, um, you know, following, following these different routines that were just really helped my body feel amazing. And every single time I got done with a workout, I felt so good. It was like blissful, I think probably an hour after where I had no dizziness symptoms. And I just felt so amazing afterwards. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this has to be it. So I really did just embrace the whole fitness journey. And, you know, I used to hate working out, but now I absolutely love it. Like it's my favorite, favorite part of my day. It's so much fun. And afterwards I still get that, just that rush of endorphins and dopamine and just feel so good after every single workout. And I think really strength training and exercise helped my vestibular system calm down. You know, I was under a lot of stress and anxiety and I think it helped it calm down, it just made me feel stronger and actually get physically stronger and better at each time I showed up and throughout the years that I was strength training. Absolutely. I think it's so important that we recognize that strength training does a lot more for us than just building muscle. And I was listening to a podcast with a guest, his name is Peter Tia. He's like the longevity guy. Uh, the other day talking about how building muscle is the single most important thing you can do to increase your health span, not just your lifespan. So how many healthy years you have. But I also think it does so much more for us than just helping build muscle and your commentary that it made you feel more confident and it made you feel like you had this rush of happy endorphins. And I think that's what a lot of people, vestibular disorder or not, sometimes feel like they tend to lack and have a hard time with. So I love that you put strength training kind of at the forefront of your journey for so many reasons. I think that's great. Yeah, it's, it, it really was empowering and, you know, it lifting heavy weights and, you know, it, I think it, that was a big part of what was just like proving to myself that I could do it over and over again, you know, even though I was feeling dizzy and didn't want to do it and just wanted to lay on the couch and be, you know, whatever, but I think actually doing it and putting in the, in the effort, like gave me this sense of empowerment, like, oh my gosh, you, you just t- did that workout and you pushed yourself as hard as you could and you're totally okay now. So like you can do hard things. Totally. And at the beginning of an exercise journey, and you can tell me whether or not you experienced this, I think a lot of people, it makes them dizzier. And they're like, well, I either feel the same or worse after. And I love that you always feel better. That makes me happy. And that's what we're going for. And I think that most people do get to that point. But I think at first, it's such a scary thing because your body is like, increased breathing rate, increased heart rate. Oh no, that means fight or flight, right? Like that's the automatic, we are being chased by a lion or we are being chased by a tiger response. But if you can kind of tell yourself, hey, I'm good, this was actually a really confidence-boosting thing, kind of shift your mindset about that, it can be so helpful. And I love that you did that in general. Yeah, I agree. I think at first it it did – bike my dizziness. It was at first, it was just like, Oh my gosh, what are you doing? You're you no, know, I'm already feeling weird. You're doing weird things with your body. Stop it. Um, but you know, after the few minutes where you feel a little dizzier and it calms down, it's just like, Oh no, I don't feel dizzier. I feel better now. And I remember the first time I ever did burpees, like a minute straight of burpees. It was like, I got done and I was like, Oh, I can't do burpees. I'm so dizzy. I'll never be able to do this. And it's just like, now I'm like, yeah, come on, let's do burpees. Like I love burpees. <laughs> not for group. I love that. <laughs> not for group. That's fair. Yeah, we do not do those in group. But if that was your goal, then you'd totally be able to do that. I, I one of my very first VM patients ever, her goal was to do burpees. And they are my personal least favorite movement, maybe on this planet. But I support those who love them <laughs> always. And I think it's such a cool thing to be able to see someone who's like, this, this movement is my goal. I want to do this movement. I'm like, let's figure out how to get you to do that movement. I saw her probably back in 2020, my one of my very first VM patients. And she's like, that's my goal. And I was like, look, I will not participate in burpeeing with you, but I will show you how to do it. And I will show you how to break this movement down. (laughs) Yeah, definitely don't say I'd like it, but being able to do it is one thing. (laughs) Absolutely. I love it. I love that you're doing them. I think that's fantastic. I do them too, but I, they're they're like you feel about lunges, I think. You hate lunges. I hate lunges. They're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I love lunges. <laughs> yeah, so everyone has one. One of those moves <laughs> that is just like, this is the worst. <laughs> totally, totally. And I think that's okay too. 
I love how in group you are so able to break down movements as a coach. Like I think that you're really good at that. And you made all the like how to scale demonstration videos for us in group, which have been awesome. And I would love if you talked a little bit about scaling movement for vestibular migraine and how you did that for yourself, because I'm sure you did before becoming a coach in group. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'd say that I kind of learned from, um, I'm a martial artist, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. And so, you know, in Taekwondo, obviously, I'm like, I'm like 30. And obviously, you can't kick above your head anymore when you're 30 years old. And so I think it comes from um, scaling movements in Taekwondo. It's just like, I know that I won't be able to kick above my head, but I know where I can kick to. And so I think that was really important when I, when, when I first started working out, you know, I was, I was following workout videos that were too much for me. It was like, I, I realized that I just, you know, I just couldn't do it. And so, um, I, grabbing the chair and using the chair. I have chairs in every single one of my videos and all of the modifications, because I feel like the chair is just so it's something so important and so powerful we can use to just grab onto and feel that extra support that we need. And so, you know, when modifying and when, you know, lessening the things we need, I think it just, for me, it was, it's more of like, well, I know I can do this extreme one, but I know that not everyone can. And so being able to modify that and take it down, I try to do, you know, a basic level, mid level and a challenging level. And I think that um, that just comes from years of knowing what I could do when I was in my workouts and being like, oh, I know I can't do a full burpee, but I can do a chair burpee. <laughs> and so, you know, using those, those tools and those resources to, um, to really make it fit what I needed. And I hope that people that are doing these workouts in group feel the same way, you know, making it, you don't have to keep up with me. You don't have to do every single move this way. You can find what works for you and modify it to your own needs and your own abilities. Absolutely. And I think that's part of what is, I mean, vestibular group fit started off. And I don't know if you know this, maybe you do already, but it started off literally twice a week, a workout. That's it. It was me and Dr. Jenna I literally lived in a basement at the time and it was like the darkest videos of all time. And it was me trying to figure out like, where's even, we didn't even have a chair of like, how am I going to teach people to modify stuff without a chair? And so the fact that you like, without prompting, we're just like, here's my chair, how this is exactly how to do this. I know exactly. Don't even worry about it, Madison. Like I got this. I was like, yeah, she rocks for sure. So I'm really glad that you are a coach coaching all of your, what's your favorite class to coach? You oh, something. you know, that's so hard. I feel like I go through some phases of like the exercises that I like to do. And every week I change up the workouts that I do. Like every week my workouts are different because I get so bored so easily. Like I, I always just want to do different things and try different things. And so, you know, sometimes I'm like, I love weightlifting. And then sometimes I'm like, I love cardios. I love running. So it just, I don't know. It just depends on the week what I'm feeling. Um, it, It's hard. I will say though, I have done a couple days dancing cardio videos and I am the worst dancer on the planet. Um, but I, those always get such great comments because people are just like, I'm just laughing along with you. It's just like, good. Cause I'm laughing at myself. Cause I'm terrible. <laughs> I love a bad dance class. Honestly, I am, if you're the worst, I'm the second worst, but I think I'm probably worse than you. I'm so bad at dancing, but it's so fun. And I think it's a great way to express yourself. And I also think we've, too frequently forget that you are allowed to move your body in any which way you want. And that's what I love about what you just said. You're like, I sometimes switch it up. I do dance cardio. I do running cardio. I do strength training. I saw you did primal movements the other day. I was like, she is a creative genius. Like you you always think of different things to do, which is so much fun. And I think the reason people like coming back to class so much is like, there's always something new to, to do in group. And I attribute a lot of that too, I think is great. Um, and I think I lost my train of thought, but I love the fact that you're always changing it up and doing different things. Oh, getting back to my point is people forget that they can move in any which way. Like you should be doing some sort of cardio and you should be doing some sort of strength training, right? We need to have cardiovascular health. We need to have muscle strength not having muscle strength can lead to type two diabetes and insulin resistance and like all of these other things. So for that reason, we need it, but also for your vestibular system and for neuroplasticity. 
But I think people are like, well, then I have to do 10, three sets of 10 bicep curls and I have to go on a 5K run. And that is just so not true. No. <laughs> you can do yoga and it can build muscle. You can do Pilates and it can build muscle. There's so many away- amazing ways to move your body. Um, and that's why I like that you change it up so much. Yeah, it's. I think it's great how the variety that is offered in vestibular group fit because it's like, you know, I do think that people get in that mindset where it's like, oh, I have to lift weights or, oh, I have to run or be on the elliptical or whatever. And it's like, no, you can do, you can do all these different workouts and all of them are going to help you get stronger and better and healthier. Totally. And I think, yeah, it's going to be some combination of a bunch of different things that are going to kind of help you get to the place that you want to be at. And that's also something important to know is it's really a treatment pie. And at the very beginning of this, you said it was part, you said that in your VM journey, you're like, I'm sick of feeling like this. Maybe I'm just going to try and be overall healthier. Now that looks different for everyone, right? Some people are like, health looks like this. Other people say health looks like that. And that's what's so confusing about health and fitness industry, but we don't have to get into that. But I would love to know some other things that maybe you're comfortable sharing about what you did um, to kind of change, change what you were doing in your life. Yeah. So I think first and foremost, um, you know, getting the diagnosis, I think that really helped me. And I know a lot of people are like, you don't need a diagnosis to heal. But for me, it was just like, you know, I'm a very logical and pragmatic person. And so if I know something, then I will go to the ends of the earth to find out about it. So I really dove into all of the books, everything. Um, And for me personally, I think one, I did start on medication. And when I was diagnosed, I did get medication and getting on medication helped me calm down. Like it, it just helped me. It helped things calm down. Like I needed it and I did it and it helped things calm down. And then when I got off of it, I was like, okay, I don't want to take medication anymore. So I'm going to focus on natural healing. And so from there I went really into diet. So things that I was eating, um, I really made sure that I was eating things that were good for my brain specifically, like, you know, fish and berries and dark leafy greens and all those things that they, say you should be eating. That's good for your brain health. Um, and I did actually follow, um, the heal your headache diet for a while too. Um, you know, I read Dr or not Dr, um, Alicia Wolf's book. And I found that personally, and I know this is very contested, but I personally found that it was really helpful for me. Like there were, were certain things I was consistently eating. I had no idea could be migraine triggers. Um, you know, I was like, I'd wake up and have yogurt with nuts in the morning and then I'd have peanut butter with bananas in the afternoon. And it was like those things, like I was eating all the time were, you know, really impacting me. And I, since then I've reintroduced a ton of food again and, you know, I can mm-hmm. eat pretty much everything, but that was really helpful. Um, and then for me personally, I found a lot of power and strength in natural healing practices. So acupuncture is a huge one. I love acupuncture. I try to go, I used to go like twice a week. Now I go like once a month, but I, I just love it. It makes me feel so good inside and out. Um, and then I went to the chiropractor. I, I do like the chiropractor and we don't feel the same about that, but I do like, hey, the I am pro <laughs> literally whatever works for you. If yeah. you say something works, I say, yes, go right ahead. Totally. Yes. Um, and then he, that was another one that was really huge. I found that, um, you know, I really need, uh, needed a lot of energy healing. Like I just needed, I needed that support for my soul as well as my body and things. Um, so that was really great. And then honestly, meditation was huge for me too. Like I, I dove deep into the meditation world and that, that has been a key player as well, because I think mindset is so huge for vestibular warriors. Like, I think that when we're drowning in our symptoms, there's so much anxiety, so much dwelling, so much, just everything going on. And, you know, my, my brain personally goes a million miles an hour a second. And so being able to calm it down, really, I remember the first time I meditated, I was like sitting there and I felt still. And for somebody that experienced is like, it was experiencing constant, constant swaying and spinning and dizziness. I like sat down to meditate and it was the first time I actually had felt still. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel still right now. Like this is absolutely amazing. So that was, that was a huge part too. That's amazing. I love all of those things. And I want to be, I know we don't, not everyone has the same like 
things that they recommend, right? But I am the kind of provider that if you are like this thing, going and finding a blue camel in the desert helped. It's like, okay, is there medicine that's going to back that? Absolutely not. Yep. But <laughs> did it work for you? Fine. I don't really... I don't care. As long as it's not going to harm you, right? As long as you have enough water and food in the desert to go find your blue camel. I don't (laughs) care. So as long as you're not going to hurt yourself, like there's some devices that like could burst your eardrum and that's something I'm going to be like, please don't do that. But as long as you're not doing that kind of a thing, I say go right ahead. Um, But I love like that kind of a holistic treatment pie practice that you're doing, especially when you're like, okay, I was taking meds. Now I'm not taking meds and this is how I'm going to go about it. And I think that there's a big divide in the vestibular world between, am I going to take meds? Am I not going to take meds? And first I want you to know that like, you shouldn't pill shame yourself. You person listening to this, right. It's totally fine. We have Western medicine for a reason. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take these medications forever. Like you are the perfect example of this. I think most people are the perfect example of this where they're like, I I think that I can take these meds and try all these other things at the same time. And then when I'm ready, get off of the meds, however that looks for me. So if you're like, I know for a fact that I don't want to be a person who takes these, give yourself time and also have that conversation with your doctor and get on one that's easier to wean off of because there's a lot of them that are harder to wean off of than others. And so going into it with your neurologist being like, I want this to be a more short-term solution for me. What do you think I can take so that hopefully it will work? And then also I can wean off of it at some point. I think that's a really important conversation to have with your doctor. I wholeheartedly agree. I think that the meds were important for me to calm things down. Like I don't think that I would have been able to get there on my own had I not had that little bit of, and you know, I was only on them for, I think four months. And so I was on them for a very short amount of time, but it gave me enough time to where it was like, okay, brain's calm enough now. Now we can go into the things that you want to do, the natural healing that you want to take. So I agree. I think that, you know, there should be no pill shaming. Like if you take what you need to take to feel better, do what you need to do. (laughs) A hundred percent. And so much of it is like brain chemistry at the end Mm -hmm. of the day. It's like your brain is like, oh my God, I'm panicking. And there's all these weird chemicals happening in my brain that like are produced by your body, but they're just like off a little bit. And if you can take something to regulate that brain chemistry, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm pro, I'm pro take the pills you need. And also I want people to know that some people have a lower tolerance and a lower threshold to stimuli than other people. So Mm -hmm. like you can be genetically born with a threshold that makes it nearly impossible for you to get off medications. And that's okay too. There's going to be like a whole host of different, different people and different things, migraines, a spectrum disorders. So no matter what, all we're trying to say is do not shame yourself for whatever spectrum you are on of that. I think that's great. I think that's a great point. And I think that goes for all, for all sorts of healing that people try, like you were saying with the blue camel, like, it's like, you do what you need to do. Like, I think that's so important and such a, such a good thing to put out there. It's just like, if you believe that this thing is going to help you or is helping you, then do it. Like do that thing. As long as you're not harming yourself, do that thing. Like that, that's amazing. I love that message. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. I think that it's, it's underutilized that way because I think so many people are like, well, if I don't do this exact science-based thing, then it's a problem and blah, 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 blah. Like there's a bunch of stuff going on the internet where like you pour hot water on your mi- on your feet and your migraine will go away. It's not going to go away forever. And we shouldn't be telling the whole entire world that this is like a cure for migraine or that this is like the solution or this is whatever. But like, if you feel good with your feet in warm water, like that's okay to do it. Yeah. Like this is the problem that I have is like, I am never going to tell someone that this is going to cure their headache or their migraine or their dizziness or whatever. Definitely not. Definitely not. There's no cures for migraine. There are no cures for dizzy, dizziness disorder, vestibular disorders. I should be more specific, but if something feels good to you, and it's not harming you, please do not boil your feet. But if it's not (laughs) harming you, it's like finding a blue camel in the desert. Like you're never going to find a blue camel, but 
it's if that is like, okay, I feel good. It's not taking away from my job, right? I'm not hurting myself. I'm not harming myself. I'm not harming other people. But something feels good. It's kind of like putting a heat wrap on your neck. Now, I am mad at the foot water lady because she's telling everyone that like this is the solution to all migraine. I'm mad at that lady. I don't know her. But I do think that if something feels good, feels good, it's okay. I agree. Yeah. I have I've yet to try the hot water on the feet thing, but I'll let you know if I do, if it cures me. Like, highly unlikely, but it might. <laughs> highly unlikely. It's not going to. But again, if it feels good, it's like going to get a pedicure and you put your feet in the thing. It feels good. But like, it's not, it's a placebo effect probably, but eh, if it feels good, it feels good. Okay. So we've covered kind of your journey with movement, which I love. I love all your scaling and all of your things. And then kind of all the, all of your treatment pie, which I have also loved. So I know you feel the, the most still and the best with meditation. And I think that is such a great thing that you discovered about yourself. And I think everyone should try to meditate. Even if you're like, I suck at meditating. You can't suck at meditating. It's just like doing nothing. People are like, well, I have to think of nothing. And I don't think that that's true. It's like just focusing on one specific thing or kind of being at peace with yourself and regaining this connection with yourself. And I think that's what's so important about meditation. And I love to know if there's a type of meditation you like, or um, if you just like sitting. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. So, so, and I do know, I, I, I want to respond to your first statement of like feeling still when I was doing it, but I think that it's important to mention because um, I know a lot of people in vestibular group fit have the issue of feeling like they can't sit still while they're, while they're totally. meditating and it's a problem. And so this is something I've actually experienced on and off while I'm meditating. And honestly, my best advice for those people is just embrace it, you know, just, and it's so hard to sit with it, but sometimes like sitting with it is actually what's going to calm your system down and going to make those feelings go away. So I, I am wholehearted fan of just sitting with it and being with it. But then, yeah, I, so I do have several kinds of meditation. Um, you know, I go back and forth a lot. Um, so I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. You might need to edit this out later because I'm going to talk. Okay, okay, so cool. I'm a go. huge fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's an amazing, uh, he's has a lot of science-based research behind meditation and, um, I'm a huge fan. He, you know, he writes this, he's written uh, several books. You are the placebo. Okay. You are the placebo by Joe Dispenza. Yes. So he has a lot of science-based research on um, meditation and how, you know, basically healing, healing the body through our thoughts and through basically like calming our, our brains. And I think for me personally, I think that was super helpful because I, you know, I, I, I was, I was in, when I was in the deep of my, the stabler systems, I was the most stressed out person on the planet. Like I was constantly beriddled. I was in a job where I was just stressed to the max all the time. I come home and I had just, you know, all the stress, all the responsibilities and, you know, adding a vestibular disorder on top of that makes everything stressful on top of it because you're so anxious and worried all the time that you don't have you don't have the capacity to calm yourself down. And so reading his work, it was very helpful for me to be like, okay, like this is what meditation is actually doing in my brain. And this is why it's helping me calm down and regulate my emotions better. And so that was, that was really helpful for me is like following his books and doing his meditations. Um, I also, you know, go on YouTube and search meditation videos. Like, you know, just I'll find random ones. and I'm like, I'm going to try this. And I do that. Um, there is somebody else on YouTube. His name's David G. And he has just the most calming, soothing voice ever. He's just like, I don't know. He, he's like, he has like a big white beard and, you know, he's the epitome of like a meditation guru guy. Like you look at him you're just like, oh yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, he's, he just has a very calming voice. So I find that really for me personally, you know, besides the two, those two, any video or any videos or anything, YouTube is great. I go on YouTube all the time. I use YouTube all the time. Um, any kind of videos or anything that I find that just are calming like that. That's what I really needed was just like a calming, 
calming vibe that, and I personally, I like, um, I like the ones where they instruct you versus like sitting there silently by myself. Cause that's when my head spins and my mind goes crazy, but ones where they like, they're talking to you and they're like, feel this emotion or think about this or use this mantra. I like that a lot better because it just helps, you know, tone in my brain to focus on one thing versus sitting there, trying to sit there silently and not think about anything. I love that advice. I think that anything that makes you feel calm, always my favorite thing. I do have a lot of patients actually who recommend Joe Dispenza. I have never used him for meditation, but lots of people like him. So I am pro what lots of people like. Um, and then I'm going to have to look up David G too. I will link all these things below. And then one more resource I wanted to give everyone, um, is the guy who like talks most about somatic tracking and what you were saying before about like engaging with that rather than being like, Nope, I'm going to push that away. That's not for me. Uh -uh, I'm in denial that this is happening. I hate this stupid vestibular system. I can't believe you're doing this to me. And rather than saying like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. And I never want to feel this way again. If you can say like, literally claim it and name it. Like I have people who have named their brain and named their dizziness. Like my brain is Gary and my dizziness is Alfred and Alfred's here today, but like, we're just living next to Alfred and like, I'm not going to let Alfred ruin my day. And that is a really hard place to get to. And I want to be cognizant of that, but it is also a really important place to get to because the less you can fear your dizziness, the less you can say, this is something that's coming to attack me. There is a lion chasing me. The more your brain can calm down and say, oh, I'm good. Actually, I don't need to help you panic and be more anxious. I don't, that's not actually helpful, but thanks for letting me know, Alfred, I can actually have you go away. And so I, that is such an important thing to know. I agree. And I, I had somebody actually um, put me onto the no big deal theory to where, you know, when you, when you had like a sway or a feeling of dizziness or something like came, then instead of sitting and dwelling on it, you're just like, oh, huh, I noticed you, no big deal. Like, and then you just move on with your day and just, you know, it was the, it's the feel, it's the idea that, oh, I felt something weird. No big deal. Moving mm -hmm. on. Absolutely. I love that theory. I'm going to start using that. The um, Someone in vestibular group fit in the chat the other day was like a, a sway sensation came to me and she's like, usually I panic. But instead I said, ha ha, you caught me by surprise. You know what? I'm going to catch you by surprise. I'm fine. And I was I like, love that, that. Is the best thing ever. That makes me so happy. I love that. <laughs> you know, I was like literally killing it. That's exactly what we're going for. I thought it was so funny and perfect, frankly. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, you know, it's funny too, because, you know, kind of talking about the D Joe Dispenza thing, he talks about neuroplasticity a lot, which I like because he, he is all about retraining your brain to like change those thought patterns. And, you know, obviously he's very generalized. It's not like you know, vertigo specific, but it is like, it's the constant repetition. And that, that I think for me personally took the longest in my healing was the neuroplasticity and training my brain that I was okay. And not to constantly obsess and dwell on symptoms, like just, you know, realizing you don't need to be anxious. Don't dwell. Um, he says this awesome thing, which I love, which is called, uh, he says, um, what you pay attention to grows. And so I think that for me personally, it was just like, yeah, like I was focusing on my symptoms all the time. I was paying attention to them all the time. And so they kept getting bigger and bigger. And it, it took a long time to train my brain to not do that, but it is possible. You can train your brain to not do that. <laughs> it, it is so possible. I love that you've gotten to this place where you feel comfortable with that. I think what I compare this most to is uh, having a toddler at home or like knowing a toddler. And it's like, how many times do you have to say please and thank you or be remind them to say please and thank you before they remember, right? It's like now your, your brain has forgotten its please and thank yous and you have to retrain. It's going to take hundreds of thousands of times. How many times did your parents tell you to say that? You don't even remember, yeah. right? The, and how often do you remember? Like 85% of the time, maybe 95% if it's like a good week. So it's something that I love that you're saying that's like, it does take time. And I think a lot of people are like, well, I need this to be gone literally tomorrow. And it's not going to be, but being like, 
I'm sitting with this. I'm not super comfortable with it. I don't like it, but I can sit here with this and be okay. And I know that like X, Y, Z thing has kind of helped me come down. Like I have a toolkit um, and I can engage with my dizziness is so important. And that's what is so impressive about you. Go you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, and I do want to say too, with that, like I had been thinking, I read when I read through your questions, this was something that I really wanted to a point. I wanted to get across to people, you know, if I had one, one thing that I would want them to know, and I'd want them to share is that your healing takes work. You have to put in the work, like, you know, whether that's finding the doctor that you're going to advocate yourself and find that doctor that's going to give you your right treatment plan or trying those you know, those natural healing treatments or putting in the time to meditate or showing up for your group fitness class or whatever that looks like to you. It, it takes work and you have to put in the work. Like that's just what it comes down to is, you know, it's, it is a hard and tedious process and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of work. But, um, once you start feeling better, it's so worth it. Like it is so worth it to not be in the terribleness that is vertigo all the time. Absolutely. I think that is such a great, a great point to make. I do have two more rapid fire questions. You got my first one because I know you read through it and I love that you answered it. I have two more. Are you ready? Go for it. All right. So other question is what's your favorite part of being a vestibular group fit coach? Yes. So I have a kind of a dual part answer for that. So first of all, I just love, I love that you have created this platform. So when I, when I was first going through this, I felt like I had nothing. Like I, there was no one was really talking about this. Like, you know, doctors weren't really sure about it. And I felt like everything I had to do, I had to learn on my own and figure out on my own. And the first time I went through your website, I was just like, Oh my gosh, had, had I had this long ago, this would have been life changing. So, you know, it just, it's so amazing. And I'm so, so proud and touched to be part of the community because it, it means so much to me, just be a part of it. And then second, I, I always wanted a way that I could help people going through what I was going through. And, you know, I had thought about it for a long time and it's like, I'm not going back to physical therapy school. I'm not going to get my doctorate. Like, you know, I'm not going to do any of that. And so I, I feel just very, very blessed and very lucky to be a part of um, this community where I, I can feel like I'm helping people that have gone through what I've gone through. And I'd say that's my favorite part is just, you know, seeing people try these workouts and being like, Oh, that was so fun. Or this was really awesome. Or I needed to hear that today. That, that just fills my cup so much. So I, I just love being a part of it and feeling like I'm helping somebody along the way. You really are. And we love having you as a coach. So I love that you're here and I'm so happy that it makes you happy. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My other question is, what is your biggest goal that you have reached or want to reach as a VGF coach? Yeah. So I feel like personally, I have, um, I've reached a lot of goals. I I've set many milestones along the way of my vestibular journey, things that I wanted to accomplish, things I wanted to do. Um, and I feel like I've been able to check off all those goals, which is really awesome. Um, but you know, as a coach, I, I really want to teach people. Well, first of all, I want to help people build their strength, not only in their body, but in their mind and become healthier and become stronger each time they step on the floor. And each time that they, you know, they do anything in vestibular group fit, I want to help them become the best, strongest versions of themselves. But I also, you know, hopefully this doesn't sound like narcissistic or naive of me or whatever, but I'd like to be inspirational for people. You know, I, I feel like I, I, I was, I've been where the, where a lot of people are or have been, you know, I, I was so bad for me at one point. I like, I couldn't walk on my own. I remember I had to walk with my husband, like holding on my husband, walking around the block, or I couldn't like drive by myself or stand up in the shower. Like I couldn't even stand in a shower. I had to sit down in the shower every time I showered. And, you know, now I, I go through and (laughs) I climb mountains and run five K's and, you know, do Taekwondo and spin around and get kicked in the head and like all of these different things. Um, so I just, I hope that people see, you know, even if you've been through the darkest of dark, even if you've gone through the most horrible things there, you know, there is a path to recovery. You can get better and you can do all the things that you want to do, you know, don't limit yourself and don't, 
I want, I just want people to know that you can do anything you set your mind to. You don't have to shy away or be afraid because you have a vestibular disorder. You can do it. And I hope that I inspire somebody to take that path and pursue whatever, whatever dream they might have living with a vestibular disorder. That was my favorite answer so far. And if you're not watching this, I'm literally about to cry. So I think that is a perfect stopping point. Thank you so much, Kelsey. If anyone wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? Um, you know, anywhere. I, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm happy to provide email, phone number, anyone that wants to. I'm pretty open. So anyone that wants to reach out, feel free to give, me, give them my contact information because well, I'm, I'm happy to talk to them. Will do. I'll put the link in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure as always talking to you and I will see you soon. I'll talk to you soon, but um, to everyone else, have a great rest of your day and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening today. I'm really excited for this podcast. If you would like to find me on Instagram, give me a follow at the vertigo doctor and the podcast at grounded.vestibular.pod. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in working with me, try Vestibular Group Fit, the affordable, comprehensive program that focuses on movement, mindset, support, and education to take you from feeling frustrated and dizzy to feeling in control of your vestibular disorder. Or we can work together one-on-one in California, Virginia, Maryland, Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, Wyoming, and Wisconsin. Your success story begins today dizziness does not have to be forever. Let's get you the right tools to thrive. I love you and I'll see you next time on Grounded. Mm-hmm.